Hello viewers and welcome back to Map TV. Hope you are all keeping well. Just want to say a massive thank you to all our new subscribers who have joined the channel. We have some epic content coming out this year, so yeah, you're in for a treat. And uh, if you haven't seen any of our previous episodes that we've done, make sure you go and check that out because it's just as good. Anyhow, we are doing a behind the scenes episode. Uh, today, motorsport performance. So it's a very, very busy week. This is not an opportunity to wear, so the camera is out. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into that workshop and go and see what all the team are up to. So. Let's go. Mr. Teddy. Hello. How are we doing? Yeah. Welcome to Motor Sport and Performance Behind the Seats. Yes. So tell me what you're on with today. It's uh, Monday. So it's Monday morning. First thing, it's freezing, it's misty. Uh, but we've got a good job to start the week. It's a chassis stage zero with some pedestal springs, um, customers optioned. Uh, so yeah, I've just literally got the rear subframe off. I'm just gonna slot some springs in, IRS base kit in, and it's onto the front, some camber bolts, uh, and then we're going for wheel spacers on this one, uh, and then a four wheel alignment with yeah, customers yeah. on his way. So the wheel spaces are quite a popular option, isn't it? Yeah, so just when you've lowered your car, it makes it look better. Yeah. Uh, also widening your track, so technically you're better handling. Um, but yeah, wheel spaces are a great option. It just makes the car look ace, you know. It's, it's not like a, a stance media thing, it's just how the car should have come. Yeah, so, OEM Plus. OEM Plus, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and what it handles like, a million times better as well, so. Yeah, yeah man, let it crack on. Yeah, thank you. So here we are, joined by D, Motorsport Performance. What's happening? It's going down. Tune in today? Yeah, RB25, Sylvia S14, drift car, um, big single turbo, twin wastegate, um, obviously, full drift prep. Yeah. Um, Link, G4, ECU, standalone. Yeah, man. Been tuned by someone else before, engine blew up. Chucked a uh, Conrad out of block, made a nice little inspection window in block. <laughs> uh, so a guy's rebuilt it and he's brought it to me for it to be set up properly on a dyno. Um, looking at the tune, I'm not that surprised that it broke. So <laughs> we'll get this dialed in this afternoon, make some noise, and then we can give him it back. Nice. So here we are, we're joined by Mr. Ben, but we, we call you Eggnog, don't we, because we can't pronounce his surname. You can't pronounce his surname. I can't pronounce his surname. <laughs> so, new member of MAP? Yeah, moved, came across two weeks ago. Um, been working at a dealership for five years. Um, known these lads for quite some time and yeah, worked my way in and now I'm here. Here we are, and yeah, first job of the week, Mustang. Yeah, first job of the week, we've got this yellow Mustang. Um, Full IRS base kit, alignment, side markers, and it's also up for the calipers painting. Nice. Uh, that should look good when it comes back. Yeah, busy Monday then. Busy Monday. Let's go. So just talk me through what you've done so far. So I've just got through to finishing off the IRS base kit and the rear springs. Uh, I have to do it in order, so we've got front, uh, rear to front. Uh, so all the rear stuff is nearly done, I'm just popping the spaces in. Um, got to make sure they fit, and there's a lot of people fitting them out, checking if the studs touch the inside of the wheel. Yeah. So just got to check that. Um, we don't like to cut studs here. We don't cut studs. Um, whereas normally, pretty with the setup we run, 23, 25 front, um, you normally nine times out of eight, ten good. But sometimes you get a little lip on edge at stud that'll just dig in. So you just got to get that off with a special tool. Nice. Yeah. Once these are on, it's on to front springs. So we're back in there. The dyno, catching up with D. How's the tune going? <laughs> I've had to rebuild the full thing. Yeah. It'd been tuned before, yeah. and I downloaded what were on the ECU, and it was just all, it was scrap. 
it were all scrap. So I rebuilt the fall of fuel model, ignition timing model, reset all the ECU parameters properly. Um, and I got the idea that I hadn't been tuned properly before. So to confirm, I um, checked the timing, the base timing on the ECU uh, to see if it was actually getting the right amount of ignition time that's requested in the map. Because if it's not being zero properly, that means you can either be advanced or retarded to what you're actually requesting the ignition timing map. Um, so I've had a timing light on it, had to modify a little clear ignition lead, uh, HD lead to get a timing light on it's a coil and plug system um, and it were about 10 degrees off um, its actual zero timing angle so <laughs> I'm not sure if it were retarded or advanced but either way it's not good for engine um, if it were 10 degrees advanced and someone were tuning it without knock detection um, I'm not surprised it's, it actually threw a Conrad out of block because uh, if he thinks it's at 1.2 bar at 10 degrees of timing it's not actually at 10 degrees, it's actually more than like 10 more degrees. So it was actually running 20 degrees at 1.2 bar, which not that, not that good. <laughs> um, so like this is what the fuel model looks like now. Yeah. So you can see that. That's the fuel model. And then that's the ignition timing model. Yeah. And if I just open the original. So you can actually see how much of a mess it was. <laughs> so like that is the fuel model. Oh wow. Originally. <laughs> it's all over the place, isn't so it? So like if you think that's that represents the fuel flow to the engine. Yeah. So how do you think that's gonna make the engine drive? Like a dice banner. <laughs> so like that's your that's that's a fueling map, and then your ignition timing map, same again. No real model to it, just lumps of timing here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Um, compared to that. Yeah, man. Looks so, nice and yeah. smooth. <laughs> the car's not even on the dyno yet. I mean, I've had to spend that much time actually rebuilding the tune. Usually you can get a car in, it runs, the car runs. Usually like a car like this, you can get it on dyno and you can just tune it straight off what's already in the ECU, but I've literally just had to scrap it and start again um, because it was um, a bit dreadful. So soon you'll be making some noise then. Yeah, chucking some flames out of the bonnet. Yeah, man. <laughs> Ben, the main man. Uh, I hope Fox Films are where you're at. We're doing it behind the scenes. Really? Oh yeah, I liked that video. That yeah. was a good one. Alright, okay. Uh, so. so we're installing the supercharger on this, so I'm just dismantling it. I'm about to start taking front cover assembly off, so that we can put an oil pump and crank gear in here. Yeah. Um, this is supercharger. Nice. It is pretty. Quite looking forward to seeing it on the car. Yep. You want to see something really special? Let's go do it. On, I think it's got to be one of my favourite ones yet. I always did prefer the Gen 3. Ah, oh, Gen 4 with full. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a proper trophy, is that, isn't it? Yeah, man. So, yeah, now this is going on a good customer of ours. I think uh, you're going to get to see more of it. Yeah. When it comes in, it's coming in this Saturday, so we're, I'm mega excited to get some of that shot for you all. Yeah, man. So, day, yeah, man. Superchargers everywhere, <laughs> with piles of the damn thing. <laughs> so, Ben, yellow Mustang's nearly done. So, yeah, all done. It's just on alignment ramp now. Um, we've got this in for his first year service, putting a nice K&N high flow air filter into it. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, we get cracked on. So Teddy, the uh, car's on the alignment ramp? Yeah, uh, just need to get it set up. Uh, and we're going to jump 
thrust fee alignment for a fast road one. Yeah. Uh, one of our custom settings. Um, good car, man. It's great. It's looking good with the spaces. I really like it. Obviously, I just need to align it, road test it, check it's all all right. Uh, and then, yeah, customer's on his way, so hey. it's cracked on. It's your famous catchphrase, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we started tuning it. Customer said it had a 1.5 bar spring in it, which is a little bit high to me. So I took one of the waste gates off, because it's got two, to check the spring, and it's got a black and a red, which by tiles, waste gate, spring chart, that should be one bar. Um, but I was hitting my safety boost cut at 1.2, so I'm like, something's a bit fishy here. So I stuck my head down the back to see the second gate, and it looked different, so I'm like, why has it got two different waste gates on it? For the people who who don't know, this is an external waste gate and this is what controls your boost pressure. Uh, most turbo systems use an internal gate, um, whereas this is an external. Um, so basically what it does is exhaust gas goes in there um, and it's got a pressure feed to the top of the, the um, well, the bottom of the diaphragm on the waste gate um, and then it vents exhaust gas out of there um, to control the boost pressure. So if you've got a spring inside here, which looks like this, that's rated to one bar of boost pressure. What happens is you get a feed of pressure there. Once it gets to around one bar of pressure, this diaphragm begins to open and vents gas out to maintain it, maintain boost pressure at one bar. So obviously that isn't working because it were going well over a bar. So taking both waste gates off straight away. If you look. Yeah, they're a different colour, which, fair enough, they do come in different colours. But when I start to look at them closer, this one looked a lot cheaper than this one. So I've um, done a bit of research and this is a fake waistcoat. <laughs> and this is a real waistcoat. But I've pressure tested them both. Neither of them work, um, which is very interesting. So when they were saying they were getting 1.5 bar of boost pressure um, and they reckoned it was a 1.5 bar wastegate spring, it was never a 1.5 bar wastegate spring. The wastegate just wasn't working properly. So what happened, this has actually just been freshly rebuilt. So they've been running it on gate pressure when really the wastegates have just been failing. Um, and they've been going 0.5 bar over what it should be doing. Um, so yeah, anyway, the engine threw a conrod out of block. So it probably boosted to like 1.8 bar or something. Um, and yeah, blown up, done a dead. So we've ordered him two genuine waste gates now um, to get rid of this absolute awful thing. Um, but like, look at that. Uh, that's supposed to seal and there are a lot of silicon sealant around here as well so someone's been in here in the past to try and fix a boosting issue so new waste gate ordered and well two new waste gates ordered actual genuine ones will fit them back on car and then hopefully it should work yeah. um but yeah this is drift car life <laughs> so whenever you see a drift car whenever we get a drift car in here for tuning or anything there's always something that lets them down today fake waste skirts we're gonna end the video there thank you for joining us on a behind the scenes episode at what's about performance as you've seen it is busy one today. If you like this style of content or if you've got any suggestions that you would, something that you'd like to see here at MAP then please feel free to comment down below. Let us know your suggestions or even if you want to just say hello to let us know that you're there that is absolutely fine. Make sure that you are subscribed, you like, you share, anything that can help this channel grow is much appreciated and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.